Welcome to the Bearcat Coaches Show. I am Graham Simpson. Here with me is head volleyball coach, Coach Reynolds. Coach, you guys made the NCAA tournament. Congratulations on that. First time since 2018. Tell us the reaction from the team when they found out the news. Well, it was a late announcement um, Sunday night at about 1030, and we gathered in the team room and had our fingers crossed, you know, losing in the semifinals, kind of an unexpected, well, we had planned to go further, you know, and so when you uh, don't go as far as you planned, uh, you know, you got to put your fate in other people's hands, and so you just never know. So they were, they were surprised and relieved and, you know, we're just looking forward to keeping the season rolling, so. And then that semifinal match, you did lose a heartbreaker to Flagler, uh, but it didn't affect your seeding in the NCAA tournament. How do you think your team will respond to that loss as you prepare for Anderson? Well, that's, uh, I mean, it's kind of a double whammy. Losing that game was, uh, you know, it was, it was tough. We, we got out to a slow start in the first set, and, um, and then it was just like <clears throat> a, a really bad uh, cage fight with the big, fat, heavy guy on top of you, and you just couldn't get him off, you know? And so you got to keep, we, I mean, we did a great job fighting and, and getting through, but uh, just didn't have enough to, Flagler was pretty motivated, and, and, and so were we, but uh, it was just, one of those matches, you know, and um, so I think they've got. Uh, they we feel like we we left some things out on the table that uh, are there to prove, and so and then coming into this match against Anderson, uh, in the regional, uh, you know, first round of the regionals, I think uh, will be an interesting match. You know, um, having lost to them earlier this year, it, uh, plenty to plenty to play for for sure. And you did face up against Anderson, as you mentioned. You're only meeting with the Trojans. You lost to them, but you did gain some familiarity with the team. How will you translate that uh, to the court yeah. on Friday? There's been some you know, changes. We didn't have a, a full uh, roster when we played them. We were missing a couple key components uh, when we played them last. And they've had some situations. Uh, I think they've got one of their starters isn't playing. so. You know, it's a it's a different season. It's a different time. It's a different place. It's on a neutral court, um, and uh, it'll be you know it'll be interesting to see. Um, we'll definitely be prepared, and we'll definitely go in that thing uh, with our Dukes up and ready to go. So. And we're all excited for what this team has in store. But let's talk about some past figures and awards that this team earned. Yeah this season. Katie Miller was named the Freshman of the Year yeah. and First Team All-Conference as a freshman. Uh, yeah. Patricia Pantoa, Defensive Specialist of the Year, Second Team All-Conference, and then Maddie Reed, Second Team All-Conference. And you picked up the Coach of the Year Award. Congratulations on that. Tell us what those players did for the team this season. Uh, it's, as I've mentioned before, it's kind of uh, indescribable um, as far as their contributions. Katie, um, Katie came in as a true freshman um, from out in the West and unfamiliar ground. You know, I think she's been to South Carolina once when she was little on vacation or something, but um, she's come in and just done a remarkable job um, showing a lot of poise, um, you know, and uh, just she's, she's added a lot of value to our program scoring wise and everything else. Um, Patricia, uh, just again, uh, her, her consistency, her, her calmness, her leadership, uh, she's just a wonderful player um, to have on the court. We're going to miss her tremendously. She's actually looking, she's talking to a couple other schools uh, to go on and play a fifth year uh, for her graduate degree, and one of those schools is a Power 5 school in the Big 12. So um, she's a great player, so uh, we'll miss her for sure. Um, I think we kind of got that wrong. She should have been first team all-conference, but mm -hmm. That's just the way the voting goes, and we'll we'll be addressing that in a coaches conference call here uh, next week. But um, Maddie Reed, again, um, we've talked about her before, and and um, at the risk of uh, not taking away anything from the player who got setter of the year, um, Maddie Reed should have been the player of the year uh, or the setter of the year. The coaches uh, in the Peach Belt uh, who voted, we got that wrong. Um, it, it should have absolutely been Maddie Reed as the setter of the year. And um, statistically, she led the conference in assists. She led the conference in, um, uh, you know, digs for all the setters. She's um, assists per set. She was just, uh, she's, uh, 
She's an all-around player, and uh, she does so much for the leadership of our program, and uh, she's one of the main reasons why we're in this position right now. So um, uh, I know she's got a lot to play for this week. She wants to keep her season going. So it'll be, it'll be uh, fun to watch her this week. Well, all, all of our team, you know, yes. um, they've all put in a lot of work. So. Coach, thank you for your time as always. We will be watching and cheering you guys on in the NCAA tournament. And thank we'll you. have more of the Bearcat Coaches Show after these messages. As the holiday season rolls around, please consider supporting Lander University Athletics on Giving Tuesday, November 29th. With over 740 student athletes and 23 sports programs, Lander Athletics aims to build on the tradition of successes from the first three years of the Lander Athletics Giving Tuesday initiative that has raised around $250,000 to ensure Bearcat sports programs continue to thrive in the classroom, excel in competition, and develop tight community bonds in Greenwood, South Carolina. Each sports program has tailored their own goals for Giving Tuesday to address unique needs that they hope to fulfill in order to enhance the overall success of their program and to further Lander University Athletics mission. Those interested in supporting Lander Athletics Giving Tuesday can visit LanderBearcats.com for more information. Online donation pages will be available to accept gifts starting Tuesday, November 8th. Welcome back to the Bearcat Coaches Show. I am here with head men's basketball coach Omar Watai. Coach, your team got two wins in the books and you have yet another home contest on Wednesday against Erston. They're coming to town. What's your impression of the team early on in the season? You know, I'm, I'm pleased. Um, obviously, I'm pleased with the, with the first weekend. I think, uh, I think the guys brought the proper energy, uh, proper attitude. Um, the entire time, I thought they played really hard. I uh, thought they played really hard, played unselfishly. Um, one of the games we shot it well, the other game we didn't. Obviously, we shot it really well versus Swoo. Didn't shoot it as well versus Anderson, but uh, ultimately, um, our grit and our toughness, our, our, our togetherness, our camaraderie uh, got us the W in that first one. And then, uh, I, and I, I'm pleased. I thought they had a good attitude, man. We, we got a really deep team. And uh, any night might be your night. And so um, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with them. Yeah, and you talked about defeating Anderson and Southern Wesleyan uh, in the Southeast Basketball Challenge. Both games seem to feature different group of scoring. You know, your three leading scores have kind of come off the bench for you so far in the two games. How important is it that you're going to get scoring from a multiple different uh, amount of players in any given combination of five players on the court? I guess they have come off the bench. Huh? Was yes. it Pew in the first game, then Sherfield and Robinson? Yeah, no, well, Robinson. Like is yeah, Gleb was in the mix. Yeah, Robinson started. Stanford started. For me, uh, it, uh, it 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 doesn't matter who's starting, who's finishing. It could be a year that I switch it up depending on the game. It generally doesn't matter, and I think our guys realize that. We went into our very first scrimmage uh, versus an opponent, and um, at the five, I didn't say who was starting until right before tip off. Yeah. So all right, we'll go with you, Navon, and. Uh, because it doesn't matter. Um, you got to be ready to play regardless, and we're gonna we're gonna go deep into the bench. You know, we'll go nine, ten, sometimes even eleven deep. Um, yeah, I, I think th the best way to put it would be, uh, you know, Jalen Pugh had 18 points in the first game, only played seven minutes the next game. It's not a knock on Jalen at all. He got two fouls early uh, in the in the first half, and then honestly, he's got the uh, he's got as good an attitude as any player that I've ever coached, um, and so we knew. We're going to go deep to 11. We kind of discuss as a staff for 10 seconds. And, uh, you know, my associate head coach, Coach Carter, and I, we both immediately said, Pew, let's, let's yeah. take him out. He's going to not have any issues with it. And uh, we took him out in the second half. He barely played, and he was the biggest cheerleader on the bench. And so that, that's what it's about ultimately is sticking together. I think right now we got like, I don't know how many guys. I haven't looked at it, but I would, I would bet to say we've got eight guys averaging over eight points uh, at this point. And, um, yeah works for me. And I think Cooper, Sherfield, and Aguek are your three leading scorers um, mm. per, per game-wise. So those are good things. Those guys have not always been starters uh, for the scrimmages or the no. two, two games through the season. So that's good to see that you're getting scoring all around. Uh, we've seen some sports center type plays yeah. from this team. We have, we have. Uh, and that's an understatement, by the way. Yeah. What's it like coaching a team that's this athletic, this bouncy? You know, it's, it's good to see. Uh, some of them are bouncy. Some of them are not. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Chandler Lindsay, that dunk. I, I think the fact that he got that dunk uh, at the time, he got those 40 seconds left in the game, we're up by three. 
What a crucial, crucial putback. It, it was deafening. It was deafening in Horn Arena when, when he dunked that ball. Uh, shout out to the crowd. I think our fans did an amazing job. Uh, did an amazing job uh, throughout the weekend, especially on Friday night. Um, it's hard to be uh, locked in, fully engaged as a crowd runner up by 35 in the, in the second <laughs> game, so I get it. But uh, And then Dominic Stanford, I didn't realize he jumped over the guy. Yeah. He jumped over him, and uh, that was uh, that was impressive, too. Alley Oop, it was the 757 connection. Jacob Cooper yes. to Dominic Stanford. Uh, he did it twice, you know, uh, and yeah, he jumped over him. That was crazy. So it's it's good to have athleticism. We're, we're definitely more athletic than we've been, um, mixed with the proper skill. Uh, I think this this team fits fits really well together. Yeah, and you know, you talked about Stanford, the two lobs in a row for right. Cooper. People forget that Stanford also had a three right after that. He went on a he 7-0 did. run he by did. himself he for did. Dominic Stanford. Uh, you guys face up against Erskine and Wingate coming into this week. Erskine 0-2, Wingate 2-0, both of them at home. What's the practice going to be like heading into two pretty big region implication games? You know, yesterday, yesterday, um, you know, yesterday, Monday, we focused on, we focused on ourselves um, more than anything. Things that I think we had to clean up um, and things that I think we hadn't touched on enough thus far in the, in the preseason or in the in the practice and all that but uh today will be you know pretty much locked in today tuesday locked in on erskine 100 percent um and um you know obviously thursday we'll shift our focus to wing it uh maybe maybe just more about us on thursday and wing it on friday we'll see depends what the game presents itself uh, what the what, what the game presents to us rather on uh, uh on wednesday but uh you know, right now we're focused on folks on Erskine. I haven't watched any wing get at all. Uh, I plan on watching them uh, Wednesday night or Thursday early morning. Uh, but focus on Erskine. Coach, thank you for your time as always. Everybody enjoys watching Appreciate your team. You, Let's keep it up. Thanks and so much. You guys will keep watching the Bearcat Coaches Show after these messages. Break on the Lake offers a menu loaded with a wide range of delicious seafood and steaks, along with amazing selection of handcrafted cocktails. From appetizers to soups and salads, Break on the Lake's food is served with an intimate space perfect for a cozy meal with family or a quiet date night. Whatever you're here for, you can always count on Break on the Lake for fresh seafood and a warm welcome from their team. Thanks to Sports Break and Break on the Lake, proud sponsors of Bearcat Athletics. Welcome back to the Bearcat Coaches Show. I am here with Coach G, the head women's basketball coach. You guys started the season up against a top 10 opponent in Carson Newman. You guys only shot 25% from the field. The Eagles shot over 60. You guys settled in and actually outscored mm -hmm. them, uh, but you did get yourself uh, in a hole with a slow first quarter. But your team did play resilient and was able mm -hmm. to come back and make it competitive. What does that say about your team early on in the season? I think it says we're young, you know, and, and we've got a lot of fight in us. And once, once we did get settled in, we had a, a freshman point guard starting for us and playing a lot of sophomores and juniors, and we found that rhythm, and it was really exciting to see us finish that 30 minutes out strong. Would have been nice to, yeah. to get a little extra, but didn't, didn't have enough just there at the end. Yeah, and you guys had five different players in the game against Carson Newman. You know, you had a deep scoring threat leading up, going up and down the lineup. What does that say about your team? Like you said, they're young, but they're still able to compete. Yeah, it's exciting. We're figuring each other out, and, and we're, with each experience, we're finding each other's strengths and, and where we score the best. Um, but the beauty of having a, a deep bench that, that are all scoring threats is that you, you take away one of us, the next one can just step up. So that was exciting to see. Yeah. And uh, then on Sunday against Lenore Ryan, the game uh, was inverted. You were able to keep it close for the first three quarters, and it kind of ran away with it in the fourth. You know, what's it like, you know, knowing that your team can compete with some of these teams? You're just falling a little bit short. Yeah, you know, it, it just came to running out of steam there at the end. And, again, I, I don't – I don't intend to use this often, but early it, it's that, that inexperience and, and legs and just figuring out how to take good shots and make good decisions. We went on that run and we were able to, to get it close within, within six, seven, and then you know, take a few fast shots in transition that might not have been the highest percentage shots. And um, a team like Lenore Ryan, who's got an experienced group, um, came and capitalized on it. So hopefully we learn from those mistakes and, and take it into Wednesday. Yeah, and you're back. At home Wednesday against yeah. Lincoln Memorial, the rail splitters will be coming to Greenwood. Then you go to Catawba on the weekend. How good will it 
feel to finally play in front of the home crowd? Oh, it's so exciting. Everybody loves playing at home and and to play in front of this crowd and, and this arena is, um, in my opinion, it's one of the best Division II arenas in the nation. So it'll be really fun to, to have the lights on us at home. Coach, we wish you the best of luck. We will be cheering you guys on throughout the week and we'll have more of the Bearcat Coaches Show after these messages. Open since 1959, the Dixie Drive-In is home to the Dixie Cheese. A short order restaurant with a family-friendly atmosphere, the Dixie Drive-In offers comfort foods like burgers, fries, and sweet tea. Located across the street from the Jeff May Complex at 600 Montague Avenue, be sure to plan your post-game meal at the Dixie Drive-In. Don't forget Giving Tuesday is coming up November 29th. Be sure to go to LanderBearCats.com to find out more how you can help support your favorite Bearcat teams. Break on the Lake offers a menu loaded with a wide range of delicious seafood and steaks along with amazing selection of handcrafted cocktails. From appetizers to soups and salads, Break on the Lake's food is served with an intimate space perfect for a cozy meal with family or a quiet date night. Whatever you're here for, you can always count on Break on the Lake for fresh seafood and a warm welcome from their team. Thanks to Sports Break and Break on the Lake, proud sponsors of Bearcat Athletics.